Hello, Insatiable listeners. Season six is now complete. We are on a break in between seasons. I'll return on Wednesday, February 13th with a new theme and a big surprise. I can't wait to share it with you. I am so bad at surprises. So let's just say that if you love the type of conversations we have here, rabbit holes and experimenting, you're going to love it. In the meantime, enjoy these podcast interviews I've done recently. They are quite a range of topics, but hey, you know that's how we roll here. And there will be a few classic episodes leading up to season seven that will help you get the most out of the season and a clue about the theme. Also, if you enjoy the show or have benefited from it, I'd so appreciate a review. You guys totally rallied this summer to get us to over 100. We're currently at 105, and I would love for us to get to 150 by spring. It really helps the show as it makes it easier for others to find it. And I'd like to read two recent reviews. This one from Insatiable Listener, and her review, or his, was more smash the patriarchy than light and love. If you want trite, simplistic solutions to health and wellness, this is not the podcast for you. You won't find bad diets or tidy, Instagrammable quotes, but that's why it's amazing. Allie has a gift for interviewing that brings out her subject's authentic wisdom. It's perfect if you're curious about how to be healthier in all senses of the word, appreciate the nuance and complexity of our unique bodies, or if you just want to hear smart people talking to each other about how to navigate and destroy cultural systems and reassess our, cult- our collective values. Thank you so much for that uh, five-star review, insatiable listener. <laughs> Love that you're into uh, reassessing our collective values. And another one that I'll share from Design Lover 757997. Nuance, smart, and sassy too is the title of her five-star review. She says, I'm exhausted of the constant unhealthy messages that barrage us everywhere from Instagram feeds. Seriously, those people with the super round butts, they don't tell you it's implants. To our diet culture in general, insatiable is my personal weapon of resistance against those messages. It's balanced, intelligent, and Allie, the host of the podcast, brings in some of the most interesting people I've heard in podcast interviews. Look, if you want to break free from rigid rules, but still live a healthy and balanced life, Insatiable can help you carve out your own path. No rules, no dogma, just thoughtful new ways of seeing and being in the world. Thank you so much, Design Lover 757997. And I'll be reading some more (laughs) uh, in in some upcoming episodes. If you have time or, again, have benefited from the podcast, here's how you can leave a review. You launch Apple's podcast app. You tap the search tab and you enter the name of the podcast you want to rate or review, in this case, Insatiable. Tap the blue search key at the bottom right. Tap the album art for the podcast. Tap the reviews tab and then tap write a review at the bottom. And if you don't have time for that, if you could just rate it, how many stars you would rate it. That is also super helpful as well. And thank you for being a listener. Having stimulating conversations is what I most treasure in my life. And I get to have them here. And then with you on Instagram, where I connect with so many of you through your emails and, and also with our guests. It's a joy I cherish deeply. Look forward to seeing you back here in a couple of weeks for new episodes on Wednesday, February 13th. And in the meantime, enjoy these recent interviews and classic episodes. See, a lot of my clients may not even have an, an official diagnosis, yet they have experiences of anxiety. Um, and oftentimes they don't realize it at the time, but uh, what's underneath their anxiety is the reason that they're turning to food um, to, to numb out that feeling because it can be very paralyzing. You know battling food in your body doesn't work. You want to love and accept yourself. And because you're insatiable, you want results too. You bring the same intensity to your life, wanting to maximize your time potential, and experiences you have here on our beautiful and wondrous planet Earth. Fair warning, it will be a roller coaster. But for those insatiable, this is your prime time to thrive. Here's to saying yes to the hunger of wanting it all. I'm your host, Ali Shapiro, who is dedicated to pioneering a saner and more empowering approach to health and weight loss. 
Welcome to episode 89 of the Insatiable Podcast, Food Tips to Relieve Anxiety. Anxiety isn't an all or nothing diagnosis or all in your head. It's like turning up a thermostat in your body. The hotter it gets, the more anxiety you feel. In this mini-sode, I'll share why anxiety is more likely to affect women, three food tips you can implement to reduce your anxiety, and a common vitamin deficiency that might require a special kind of vitamin to relieve your anxiety. While I don't get into the emotional piece of anxiety, I will in my fall program that's coming up in September, where we'll discuss how to free yourself from emotional overeating. Oftentimes, anxiety drives us to overeat, but then our overeating causes anxiety. We'll help you transform that feeling in my fall program. Sign up at alishapiro.com, A-L-I-S-H-A-P-I-R-O.com to get on the list so that you can be the first to enroll when registration opens after Labor Day. I would love to work with as many insatiable listeners because we have such a rocking community. Enjoy this mini-sode. Hey, insatiable listeners. So today I wanted to do a little mini-sode on some food tips to relieve anxiety. I think it's been a while now, but I feel like everyone's anxious. I often hear from my clients, oh, I have social anxiety, or I'm just always on edge, or you know, I have healthy amounts of anxiety, which you can have. But it's kind of alarming to me how we've normalized anxiety. And so what I want to do today is offer you uh, some f- things you can do with your food to reduce your anxiety. So it's important to realize that anxiety is not an all or nothing thing. Like either you have it or you don't. It's often on a continuum. So think of like a thermostat, right? The more we turn up the heat, the more anxious you get. So anxiety goes up as you heat yourself up <laughs> and you can heat yourself up physically, emotionally, or spiritually if you're in the middle of you know, there's, there's many roots. Today, we're just going to talk about the physical and food roots here. But it's really important, especially most of our insatiable listeners are women, and the lifetime diagnosis of anxiety disorders is higher in women. Um, with the latest stats, 33% of women experiencing an anxiety do- disorder in their lifetime of women. Men, it's about 22%. I think either way, it's, it's too high for our, either of our genders. And I also see a lot of my clients may not even have an, an official diagnosis, yet they have experiences of anxiety. And oftentimes they don't realize it at the time, but uh, what's underneath their anxiety is the reason that they're turning to food um, to, to numb out that feeling because it can be very paralyzing. So the experts tend to believe, and again, experts are also us and our own bodies and what works for us tend to believe that it comes from a combination of hormonal fluctuations, brain chemistry, and upbringing. Women often feel more responsible for the happiness of others, such as children and spouse. So those are some of the root causes. But let's get to the root causes of hormonal fluctuations and brain chemistry, which all start with partly in part with what we eat. So some of the ways, and, and what I'm going to discuss, discuss today with your food, are really instant ways that you can, can reduce your anxiety and notice it. One of the best ways is to learn how to balance your blood sugar. I cannot tell you how many clients have reduced their anxiety dramatically by balancing their blood sugar. I, if you've listened to the Insatiable Podcast a lot or even infrequently, you have probably think I sound like a bro- broken record. But Everything comes back to, on a physical level, your gut health and blood sugar. So if you have anxiety, the chances are you're not eating right for your body. And if I could take a generic guess, a general guess, you're probably not eating enough fat. And particularly, uh, we did an entire episode on healthy fats um, that you could could check out. Um, I'm not remembering the episode number right now, which isn't very good for, for promoting the podcast. But it's really important to figure out how to balance your blood sugar. You know, there isn't one diet that works for everyone. And if you're trying to find a template and you're experiencing anxiety, the chances are that template isn't working. So learn how to balance your blood sugar. Uh, I have that as an option for one of my programs. That's an at-home self-study course. It's called Curb Your Afternoon Cravings. Because if you're getting cravings in the afternoon, you also are not eating right for your body. But also episode 46, Instant Weight Loss Tips, uh, can give you some really actionable blood sugar tips to balance them. So 
focus on balancing your blood sugar, you will be able to reduce that thermostat incredibly. In fact, I would say that's probably 50% of the physical equation when it comes to managing anxiety. The second thing is reducing sugar. So sugar makes our blood sugar rise. It also creates a rather anxious state inside of us. So I think when it comes to reducing sugar, we did an excellent episode on, or I did, it was when Juliet was still uh, on the podcast, about how to reduce sugar. And it starts with becoming aware of how much sugar you're eating. So many of my clients, they've read a lot about nutrition, they know a lot, but they don't understand how often it's sneaking in things like sauces and dressings. And even the other day, I was total, it was like 100 degrees here and I was craving a green juice. I don't normally eat them, but I had some nuts with me. I always need some fat and really wanted one. And I was at Trader Joe's and they had this quote unquote green smoothie, but it was all fruit and then just some like chlorella. And I was like, that's not a green smoothie. That's fruit with greens. <laughs> so that's just an example of, you know, even when you think you're doing healthy things, lots of sugar. So try to reduce your sugar. Swap out more natural forms uh, like maple syrup, honey, coconut sugar, even fruit. Oh, and that was episode 34, Anatomy of a Sugar Craving. Reducing sugar is a life changer. Getting off of it to the point where it's not regularly in your life is a game changer. The, the challenge there is that often sugar is the solution, not the problem. In other words, people turn to, to sugar when they are feeling anxious to numb that out or when they're tired or when they're upset or for reasons that they just don't know yet. So, but, but it's something to really start working towards and connecting to the reduction in anxiety can make it a lot more compelling uh, to reduce your sugar or get off of it rather than, oh, I'm being good or bad or is this going to help me lose weight? You'll get a much more immediate result if you focus on connecting that to uh, less anxiety. If you struggle with anxiety, I would say stick to the lower end of caffeine as part of this kind of stimulation tip. <laughs> you know, less white tea has some of the least caffeine, green tea the next, black tea, and then coffee. If you are struggling with anxiety, you got to limit the caffeine. Uh, it's just making it worse. And then the a third big thing related to food that causes food sensitivities, or fourth thing, if you consider caffeine, uh, my tip as well, is food sensitivities. So many of my clients have gotten rid of their anxiety by cutting out dairy is a really big one. Some people it's gluten. Uh, some people it's both. One client, she was one of my first clients, Joanna. Her story is on my website uh, in a YouTube video. So this is all public knowledge. She shared about how getting off dairy not only reduced her anxiety so much, but she was also able to be around her cats because anxiety is in part inflammation load that is, has hit a critical tipping point that then makes us anxious. So she was able to be around her cats um, by getting off dairy. Um, some people, it's other foods. So, but consider food sensitivities if you really want to tackle this and transform it. So you're not kind of just living with low-grade anxiety, but removing it altogether. Check out if you're, you have food sensitivities. And listen to Dr. Susan Blum, the episode we just, I just did with her on gut health. Um, we'll explain how to do an elimination diet really, really well. Um, the Cliff Notes version <laughs> are you eliminate the food for three weeks and then you add it back in. Uh, and for three days, you notice any symptoms. And again, not just in your gut, which we often tend to think about, but look at your energy, your mental fog, and see if that anxiety is present. And that's episode 83 with Dr. Uh, Susan Blum. And that was, that's been a huge hit in terms uh, for our community. Also, further sometimes complicating this is women, depression often shows up as anxiety. So if you're depressed and it's showing up as anxiety, it's going to be blood sugar, but it's also going to be gut health as well. So check out episodes 10 and 11 where we get more into those root causes of depression on the gut biome and uh, our episode with, with podcast friend, my friend, and who I deeply admire, Dr. Kelly Brogan. Uh, a natural relief for depression. And then just one note that I want to make about something specific that is important to realize uh, related to anxiety is sometimes anxiety is caused by a B12 deficiency. Now, there can be many different root causes for a B12 deficiency. Sometimes it's people who are vegetarian um, who need to be eating meat. Not everyone can thrive on a vegetarian diet. Some people do and 
great for them. Um, I have some clients who when, when they do the food experiments I give them, they get hungrier when they eat meat. And uh, other people are hungrier without it. So it's really fascinating how we're all different. But sometimes you are B12 deficient because you're not eating meat. Sometimes there's other issues there. Uh, one of them is if you have a couple SNPs on what's called the MRTHR gene. So that's M-T-H-F-R. And it abbreviates this really long scientific sounding word. <laughs> um, but if you have one of the SNPs of the MRTHR gene, again, that's M-T-H-F-R, that often limits your body's ability to absorb B12. So one of the ways, if you are someone out there who's done 23andMe, I did it for Christmas because I was just curious. And my sister had done it like several years ago when it gave you all this like scary like, si like data on diseases and I just wasn't ready to <laughs> look at that because <laughs> I'm still slightly a hypochondriac. But if you go to, if you have 23andMe and you've done that, they won't it d it'll directly tell you if you have the, the SNPs for the Merthyr for gene, but if you, you can link to, if you go to geneticgenie.com, you can link your 23andMe results for free. They do recommend a donation. I like donated 10 bucks because it was really helpful. I thought the value for me to know that I have one of the SNPs of the Merthyr genes. So if you have some of these SNPs, often it means you your body has um, trouble absorbing vitamin B12. And so all you need to do is get a methylated version of vitamin B12. So I have methylated version of B12 that I take to correct. I only have one SNP. There's, I think, up to four SNPs. Um, so it's, it's more likely that I'd have trouble, but it's not absolutely trouble. Some people... It's rare that you'll find one thing to be the silver bullet, but some people who have OCD, anxiety, um, when they start taking methylated B12, it changes everything. Uh, but for most of us, it's going to be a combination of things. And if you're interested in the B12 deficiency and root causes of that, uh, in the show notes, which you can always find at alishapiro.com backslash podcast, I'm going to do a tremendous article that Dr. Kelly Bergen wrote on B12 deficiency and its effect on brain health because there's a lot of root causes for it. But some of the easier to discern are if you have the B12, um, Merthyr the Merthyr gene that makes absorbing B12 difficult or if you aren't eating enough meat and you need it are kind of the easy, the low hanging fruit. But again, if you usually when it comes to anxiety, this is a thermostat. So if you can start absorbing B12, it turns that thermostat down. If you balance your blood sugar, it turns it down even more. Another thing that you can do to when you go to your doctor, and it's usually a test covered by insurance, to see how high that thermostat is, is get a CRP test. It's a C-reactive protein test, and that will show you how much inflammation you have. So if your numbers are really high and you're anxious, it's a pretty good sign that, that there's some relief that you could get through, through changing your diet. So... Those are some tips that you can start to use to relieve anxiety. Now, I do want to say, which this is a mini-sode, so we're not going to get into the emotional, spiritual uh, side of things, um, but I am doing a program in the fall, which if you've been listening to Insatiable the past couple episodes, um, I've been promoting, where we're going to get to the emotional reasons that, we, that people overeat. And one of the issues, uh, one of the main feelings that triggers this, that we then turn to sugar or eat the foods we're sensitive to, is anxiety. At least that's what clients are able to identify it as on the surface. But if you really have the right tools, um, which I'm going to teach in the program, if you go a little bit deeper, there's always something a little bit deeper with anxiety. Um, it can be feelings of uncertainty and what to do with that. Sometimes it's feeling of self-doubt, but it's it's a much deeper emotional piece to anxiety. And I really think if you're trying to, to do things the natural way or to do them as natural as possible, you have to address the emotional uh, side of anxiety. We'll also be addressing this cultural conditioning of why women feel more responsible for other people's happiness and how to create a win-win by not doing the emotional labor for other people. <laughs> um, so... I'm really excited for the fall program. It's it's an entree or an appetizer of Truce With Food. So if you've been curious about Truce With Food and it feels like so much of a commitment because it is you know, a longer program and it's definitely a bigger financial investment, um, this fall program that's going to be freedom from overeating around that will be six weeks, 
$497, much more digestible. Um, and you're going to, this is the fun part of the emotional stuff. It's the real liberating stuff where you can really get to a much better place with your emotions. So I'm really excited for it. It will be life-changing and I don't say that lightly, but when you can finally see what's underneath your anxiety, um, which often causes the bad eating, um, you realize it's, it's not this monster under your bed or something that you have to live with for the rest of your life. And that's so you'll start to also in the program learn if you've been told you have social anxiety, what's underneath that and how can you transform that rather than really just try to get to zero and kind of grin and bear it. And again, as someone who... I don't know if I ever had anxiety, but I definitely struggled with depression. It is so much more sustainable and and f- full of freedom to to have these emotional skills um, that give you choices around what you want to do. And again, these tools I've been fine tuning in and really getting sharp for ten years. So this is very different than other emotional eating approaches that just kind of want you to wade wade through them. Um, you definitely, we're going to work on shrinking them <laughs> so you don't feel as anxious, but there's also some really sharp tools to to shrink them faster. <laughs> All right. So I hope you like this mini-sode on how to relieve, use food to relieve anxiety and check out those other episodes because there's a lot more freedom from anxiety than you might know is possible right now. Have questions or reactions about the episode? Reach out to me on Instagram and Twitter at Ali M. Shapiro or Facebook at Facebook backslash Ali Marie Shapiro. And if you love the show, please leave an iTunes review and tell one friend this week about how to get the Insatiable podcast on their phone. See you on social media. Bye.